A very good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Chess Federation of Sri Lanka and Women's Commission, I warmly welcome you to our webinar series, The Path to Become a Champion. So this is our first webinar. As Sri Lankans, we are in search of our first grandmaster and also the first woman grandmaster. So the first webinar is themed as the journey of becoming a woman grandmaster. So for this, we have an ideal person today as the resource person, woman grandmaster Katie. So thanks a lot for accepting our invitation, Katie, and we look forward for, for a fruitful session. Also as the session moderator, we have a great product of Sri Lankan chefs, none other than woman international master, Sachini Ranasinghe. So over to you, Sachini, to conduct the session. So thank you, Katie, uh, for accepting our invitation. Very happy to have you here in our uh, first web series. So as a first question, I would like to ask you, uh, we all would like to know, how did you start your journey and how was the chess game introduced to you? And what were your first tournaments and any memorable tournaments that shaped your chess career, as well as uh, what motivated you to pursue chess professionally and to become a women grandmaster? from the start to becoming the Women Grandmaster. Right, thank you so much, Sachini, and um, greetings to everyone. Um, I'm so happy to have this chance to, to share some of my uh, story, how I started and how I continue uh, continuing to play chess and being in the chess world. So I started to play chess um, I don't remember when because in our family basically everybody plays chess and chess is always open board and you can play with your grandparents so I got I got the knowledge of chess from my grandmother she was a big chess fan like she she loved chess and she couldn't live without chess I think she loved chess more chess more than I I do actually so it was her idea uh, to me to start to play chess and my first uh, class was um, together with my school mates. So we were three of us we started to play together to, to, to learn together and uh, this chess palace was very close to our school. So it was like after school activity for us and we had huge competition. We were two girls and one boy and this boy was really competitive. He really wanted to win all the time and you know like at the age of six you, kids, are, kids are fun. Uh, the interesting thing was that the coach, my first coach is also the my first coach of my grandmother so he shared the first coach and that's something that when i was a kid i never paid attention to this but now at this point this is so so nice that we have this in common um then uh, my first tournament you asked me about my first tournament if i remember and i do remember i was like probably six seven years old we we i played the uh, regional tournament uh, and back in those days women were not playing that much so we were only two women uh myself i was a kid and the other woman uh and the rest of the players were men all of them were men they were very strong uh we played nine rounds and then in the end we had the prizes and i got the second prize in the women's section but we were only two women so <laughs> I basically got the prize just to, to participate in it. And I remember um, how proud my grandmother was with this fact that I got my first medal and the diploma. Uh, and I actually won only one game. <laughs> Out of nine games, I lost eight games. Uh, and that one game, I, as I remember, was against this woman. So she was so proud of that. Um, and I remember these talks with my family that my father was telling her, like, come on, don't put so much uh, uh, pride to her. She was like, there were only two participants and like, it's not a big deal and so on and so on. But she was always um, supporting me. And I think um, uh, that was one of the reasons why I kept pushing to 
to become a woman grandmaster, to become the world champion, world youth champion, and so on and so on. Because he knows that any chess is so um, the, the sport with so many uh, components. At some point, you sometimes feel like, oh, I cannot do this anymore. I have to, I have to stop it. I have to find the other things that uh, makes me happy to do, and this I can't handle. And at that point, you need someone to. Support very much and I had my grandmother and like rest of my family really supported me very much uh, and when I became the woman grandmaster um, I think my my grandmother was the happiest person uh, in, in the world and we had always this uh, kind of connection that whenever I was coming back from tournament or I was traveling it was always first person to let her know that I'm back and I have to leave so I had the support and I can say that uh, everything I have today because of chess it's it's very much related to my grandmother and I'm like super thankful to her yes get it it's very nice that you mentioned the family support is important uh, to become a grandmaster or be very successful in whatever you do and as a result, we see today also Pragnananda is doing very well in World Cup and his mother is behind him all the time. So let's move to the second question. I would like to ask you, like, um, what are the things you think, like approach of improving your strategic and tactical thinking interest as we don't have a grandmaster in Sri Lanka? Mm -hmm. So uh, do we have to get trained by a grandmaster to become a grandmaster? How should we see lectures coaching? And what is your opinion about this? Uh, how should the players study and improve? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a very, very good question. And also it's quite tough to answer because um to become any to get any title not only the grandmaster woman grandmaster any title you need to have you have to be strong in every every part of the chess you need to be very tactical you need to know the strategy you need to know the end games and of course the openings is one of the main things i think it should be like the combination of everything and in my opinion to have this together there is a there is very very um easy way to for instance to find a coach who is very dedicated uh and who can kind of create a plan for everyone um, and also there is uh, this very important point that we are all individual we have totally different skills we have different needs and uh, chess is not a team sport right it's, a, it's an individual sport and you I think in other sports you you just improve yourself uh, and your skills individually and then you play with the team uh, and th that's why it's good to have someone who have who supervises your progress and who tells you, okay, now you have to do this and you have to work at that uh, a, a part of the chess. Uh, and then it comes together with the practice. You can. Uh, like play it out together with your uh, colleagues and to share what so what what you learn because uh, you know chess is chess is very interesting you are teach you are learning some things you remember that at some point you forget it like in a few days and then you need to uh again and again go through this process and i think i think the trainings and the tournaments are very very good help for of that uh and another thing is um uh, in most of the countries, there is like a generations, like very strong generations are coming. We 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 very we have few cases when there's one or two super strong uh, kids. They are like generations coming alongside together because they are training together. For instance, uh, we have Uzbekistan team, which is I think the youngest team winning all the competitions because they are training together they compete each other they want to be the best and so that's why they're um actually having they are the best of the team so um with the with the help of coach i guess and like the proper um way to um uh, create the plan how to uh how to um train uh, what's like for let's say let's say so that you have the planning tra uh the, uh training plan for like one year and you follow that 
So I think that's going to be the uh, great, the greatest success for everyone. Uh, and of course, there are like uh, small nuances. For instance, it's it's great for everyone to be very strong at tactics very strong and very good at uh, openings. I think that's the key points uh, for, for the start. Yes. Thank you very much, Katie, for sharing this. And as you mentioned, like coach should have time for the student also, uh, maybe to talk during the rounds and everything, and then he should commit as well. So mm -hmm. any coach who can dedicate that time is good for the student and it depends individually, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say we do all this hard work and we become a women grandmaster. Yeah. So after women becoming a women grandmaster, what are the international benefits you will get? Like after you became a women grandmaster, what, what do you feel about can a women player take chess as her career? What is your opinion about that? Yeah, to be honest, um, to be honest, the moment I became woman grandmaster, there was when I was 17, I got my last norm. And at the age of 18, I already had uh, it as an official title because it was like my birthday. I became 18 and I got my title approved too. Uh, after that moment, I have never, I don't remember that I paid for my tournament. So when you're a title chess player, you're always getting invited for the tournaments and your costs are covered, which is a great help for everyone. Because in the end of the day, it is quite, uh, quite expensive to cover your traveling expenses, your like uh, tournament fees, then hotel expenses, food, transportation. And on top of that, you also need a coach who will help you to uh, to first train and then to uh, um, uh, pr prepare for the game. So it's a lot of expenses that you have to have. And especially for, for, for women or let's say uh, 20, 24, 20, even 2,500 uh, chess player, it is very tough to get some prize money from the open tournaments that we, that we have. It is really, really limited uh, prize. So you're investing more than you're getting in re as a return. So that's a tricky moment here. And But when you are a title player, then um, you have all these benefits that you can get the hotel, you can get the invitation, your food is then free, your hotel is free in some cases, even your transportation is uh, is covered by the organi organizers. Uh, and and that's the international benefits that you can get from from these tournaments. But there's also the local things like just imagine that. Uh, um, okay, in, in my country is not working like this because we have a lot of grandmasters. But you are the first grandmaster of your country. That's such a big thing. And I think at that point, also some local uh, companies and also the government bodies would be interested to support. Um, players in in my case um uh, i think i had a sponsor not i think i had a sponsor when i was 14 years old for like two years who was um really supporting me i had like monthly salary and uh, that was uh, that was a really big help for me as a kid and it was like really awesome and it was a private company and um um well chess is uh, is the sport that um, helps a lot of a lot of kids and not only kids to develop their skills and um, at this point everybody agrees that it's very important um, a sport or a game for the mind to improve so um, I'm sure that there, there will be a lot of like help afterwards when you achieve this title it will be you know non non stopping uh, um, things that you will get after getting your title. Definitely. And um, after becoming that, you feel like you, you have won, you have hard work has paid off finally, right? Yeah. All the hard You're work. You're tired. You want to sleep. <laughs> yes. You don't want to so, play uh, anymore. <laughs> like, yes, I have become Women Grandmaster. And then even after becoming Women Grandmaster, there are tournaments where you all uh, think planning to win and then uh, Women's World mm -hmm. Cup and then there are uh, more ratings you want to come into top 10 so goals increase uh, little by little right absolutely so uh, during all this time during the start of your journey and until you become a women grandmaster until today uh, are there any specific challenges you faced along the way and like days maybe you might have uh, won many tournaments like four to five tournaments uh, and then maybe you have lost 
so badly in the sixth tournament and how do you overcome these things because nowadays so many players feel like when they lose rating so this has become a bigger issue they worry sometimes if they decrease in 30 40 or 60 they worry so much about ratings and uh, they feel like they're not good enough so how do you overcome these and what are the challenges other challenges also you have faced mm-hmm. during this time of period yeah such it's it's so important the players who can forget their loss and come next day and get over it uh, and play normal game i think they are the most strong players because it is it is super tough to uh face the lose uh, in the tournament and just in the like sometimes we have these situations when l- you lose the tournament like you didn't win the you win the tournament so that's even even more more painful and uh, you need to somehow work out on that skill and it's a skill to get over very fast about your loss and then to play and to focus on the second game because um it's a bad news that they will be not the only lost in your game you will lose a lot of games and you have to admit but it's easier than to say than to done and of course it's quite painful for for everyone um but uh, i can share my personal personal experience with that how i was dealing with that uh i remember that the tournaments um uh, before like i was 14 years old starting from like when i was 9 10 and going and going until 14 i was losing the last games in most of the tournaments which means that i was losing the medals and um then i had to wait for another year and i had to train again to go through and then i was losing again so that's the cycle that you need to break somehow um and the moment i broke it uh then it was like the totally different a story but um for for that uh, breaking this uh, cycle my my mother helped me very much because um she had this kind of approach when i was losing the last game um and i was losing the medal she was always telling me that i have to wear the best dress to go to the closing ceremony because my friends mostly we, you know in georgia we have this chess tradition a lot of kids were winning medals and uh, when you're a little kid you have a bit of jealousy situation maybe not only kid in, like in general you have this to deal right uh and when you lost something and someone gets from your federation you're just you know not you have to face that difficulty and she was always telling me that i have to be very proud i have to smile i have to be happy for them because one day i will also be there i also get the medal and then i need friends to support me which i actually agree so much but by that time i couldn't really understood that but now i know and another thing was that she was like after every trip that we were going abroad together she was always buying a book for me and she was like you know what we going to learn this book together you will be way much better but the funny thing is that she doesn't know chess she couldn't help me to read the book but there was kind of support that i was getting from her and she was always telling me that we're going to hire another coach you need to work in the openings and like this kind of thing somehow at the end she she talks so well um and after talking with me for like i don't know 20 minutes one hour I thought I was champion. <laughs> I was the kid who was laughing the most at that that closing ceremony because I knew that the next year I'm going to be the champion. So you need to in the end we are coming back again with the support. You need to have a family support or you need to have a coach who supports you very much and who believes in you, who says you know what we're going to work on this because you lost this game in the end game. That's our topic. Let's start it from tomorrow. So that's something that you can really quickly get over it. Um and um yeah, you, you cannot deal. You need someone to support you actually. You cannot tell your parents to support me like this <laughs> after losing. And of course, sometimes there have been cases where a kid was crying after the losing the game and the parent was very upset with that. I think that's very wrong to uh to to approach to kid because there's already you know feeling already so bad that you don't need this extra extra pressure um talking about the challenges um uh there's always different challenges right when you want to achieve some title and you will oh, achieve this title there was a different challenge and now you have another challenge you want to achieve more and more and always progress uh to it so 
um and uh, yeah basically by the in my case and in general i think uh for me by the time i grow up and i was getting older and all like older i meant like 1920 and everything um my interests were changing so i wanted different things in my life and uh, uh then I was thinking like, okay, um, maybe I can do also this to help my chess. And I stopped playing chess professionally quite early. Um, and then when I came back to chess, I actually never dreamed to become world champion or gain another title because now I find my role in the chess world and I really enjoy this. And um, I am uh, very happy to be so close with the chess players um to still to feel this you know the happiness of, of what the chess world can bring us but um it really depends in which part of the world you are living what kind of support you are having from the federation or from the from the people around you can be sponsor or the government uh, and the challenges can be any kind like really any kind challenges starting with financial issues Uh, so finally, uh, you overcome all this and then you're very successful today. And we see you as a great example for every uh, one in Sri Lanka. So hoping we will also have a women grandmaster very soon. And uh, I know it's uh, not easy to become women grandmaster. I'm sure you have done a lot of practices. And even after the tournament, uh, say you have a bad tournament or a good tournament, what do you usually do? Do you analyze all your games and do you have a break or how much time you take for training if you're focusing on, say, you're planning for norm tournaments? So what do you recommend? Do we, sh we should uh, stop playing tournaments uh, for maybe a month or do we have to train? What do you mm -hmm. suggest for players how mm -hmm. to uh, prepare for tournaments? Yeah, it's very important to be in a good shape. So you should not stop training like month before or weeks before. You need to uh to to have the fresh fresh mind as well. So what I was doing was that when I had a big event coming up, I had like one month of intensive work and I was working six hours every day with two coaches. Uh and that was like really insane. Uh, because just imagine every day you don't have a break but once in a while you need to have a break because your brain needs to relax that's when you are observing all, all this information and you need a good sleep for that as well uh, i don't recommend to anyone to work every day six hours that's that's crazy it's impossible physically impossible then you will start to hate chess and no one wants to do that uh, but i think the best what from my experience the best is to take two weeks of intensive trainings uh, when you know exactly what you are doing uh, when you scheduled your um, like eating time working out time training chest time and you have to train in different part of the chest as well and you need also physical activities alongside with that because without that you can't handle five hours six hours work and then 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 the play um, and you need to get the, all these vitamins so the brain can remember everything. And then just, uh, I think, like uh, five days, six days before the tournament, just break. Don't do anything. Relax. Enjoy your life. Uh, do the things that makes you happy. Uh, maybe a little bit of tactics or so on, but don't, don't, don't get burned because we have a lot of cases when people just burn themselves and they could not play afterwards so if in my case this is a very good balance two weeks of hard work six hours per day five hours per day uh, if you can handle and then stop for about a bit like five five days off and then to play a tournament and also it's it's interesting that when you play one tournament it is very nice to play another tournament right away because you have done this work already don't waste that work and play more and more because by the practice by the experience you're getting in the tournament you are learning way much more than from the trainings so uh, during the trainings when you're studying the end games 
uh, that looks fine. But when it happens to your game, you are you're like all part of your brain is understanding what's happening. And that's how you are actually memorizing things and you are understanding things. So and of course, when you are done with the tournaments, even during the tournaments, you need to know what mistakes you have done. So you will not do it again. And uh, you need to analyze all these details also what your opponent played how you could answer to that so it's a whole process which actually uh it's not so hard like it might say uh, sounds very hard uh, but when you're dedicated that's your word and we're now talking about like two months of the jo job or like three months of a job which can take some part of the year not every every time you don't have to do it but you can choose the best of the tournaments when you can get, achieve your norm or you want to get the title and work hard on that and then you're gonna get results like 100 percent so for sure you're gonna get it yeah and uh, during preparation uh, do you have uh, from the journey you began and until now do you have any favorite chess books you read you think like this book uh, made me inspired me and helped me so much any uh, books you recommend for Sri Lankan players? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. When I was when I was kid, I was reading a lot of books. Um, these days, I'm not reading a lot of books. I like to watch on YouTube or Twitch, like like all of us. Uh, but there are like a lot of books that um, gives you the different perspective of chess. Uh, for me, that kind of book was um, the End Games. It was uh, the book. 100 end games that you must know and my mm -hmm. mom told me that if i read this book like twice i will i will always be good in the end games and somehow i it worked out i thought i was really good because i was winning a lot of end games uh with that but uh the other books what i can um i can recommend is um i don't know it's like really really uh like personal what you want to work on there are a lot of books when you can work on your strategies there are a lot of books when you're working on your tactics or maybe even the openings so um all you need is to have a plan you have to have a goal what's your goal then you need a plan this working plan and then someone has or you can also you, yourself create the training plan for yourself so if your goal is to learn king's indian opening because that's the opening that you want to learn then you have to find a book around that so yeah yeah and now uh, the generation has become uh, different and improved and then so many resources for the children uh, so so many videos so many websites to learn uh, Back in the days, many used to read books, and now mm -hmm. it has become uh, training in video video lessons. Mm -hmm. So different, different training. So, uh, do you think if individually it depends on the child how they should train? Because some say you should train with the chess board on, like you mm -hmm. have to set the board and do passes, and or maybe some kids like to do videos. What is your idea about this? Um, I, I'm I. I'm, I would agree both of this. It depends how it works for you. If you're comfortable to work with the, with the computer all the time, go for it because it's easier. And what, what we have these days, we have these videos, we have these eBooks, which is also so comfortable. So you can just download the video and watch that during your two hours train trip or your, during your like five hours flight, you can enjoy this moment and also learn something. Or in my case, I like to watch some video when I'm cooking. So this is for me is a perfect time to pay the attention to that um, rather than to open my chess book and analyze it on, on my book. So I think I think what these days like today, what uh, we have all this technique, we can be so friendly to that. We can use that. Uh, and by the time it comes to the chess tournament, then when you are actually getting close to the chess pieces. So um, of course, it is recommended to have a chess piece uh, at home and maybe to have some practice with the family or maybe to set up some like really strong puzzles to solve there. Uh, but other than that, I think to have the computer and to work with the computer is a save of time. Yeah, thank you. And uh, so uh, with all the training and uh, six hour training, uh, many practices. Do you think for chess players, physical fitness is important? 
like we have long games and sometimes mm-hmm. we feel very tired we can't focus and we feel we don't have stamina anymore to sit in the game and play and we get yeah. distracted easily also so how yeah. is this working out and what are your thoughts on this is physical fitness needed for chess players as well oh that's a, big, a very very big thing actually that you have to take into the consideration because while you are sitting for like 4 hours or five hours, the game can continue so long, your back starts to hurt, uh, or other like your muscles and your, your, your having this posture of sitting that is not very healthy for your body or just to sit so long is not so nice. So uh, it is one of the key points for the top chess players to have a sport, to be engaged with the sport which you like, like any sport which makes you happy. You like football, get a food get the ball and play football this is a very nice activity you like to swim go and do that because it's gonna help you in my case i like swim at the chess tournaments i always um i always uh, try to have the access to the sw- a swimming pool and it also helps me to relax and sleep better and it's very good for my back then i don't have the back pain or if there is no hotel is there is uh, no swimming pool in the hotel uh, and also at home i don't have it i do some kind of like yoga i like very much i like some stretches because it helps my body to to be awake to be uh, ready um i also like to walk just the simple things because i don't like to engage with the heavy gym or other other sports and this is for me is it's enough to keep the uh, the energy and it is one of the key points together with the uh meal what you eat what kind of uh food you eat uh it is a good combination to know exactly what kind of vitamins you should get what kind of food you have to get because during the game um there are a lot of grandmasters who who never they they never eat their lunch before the game, because they believe that this food, uh, the process of the food uh, takes a lot of energy and then the brain is not having enough blood uh, to circulate and uh, their thinking process is slow, which I understand. And there are like tons of players who skip the lunch uh, before the game. So uh, this kind of small details is, is very important to have like, well-balanced trainings, not too short, not too long, uh, long well-balanced daily routine, like the activities that makes you happy to do, to do uh, not to force yourself to go to gym and, uh, I don't know, to create the muscles because basically you don't need that. And also then to have the balanced food because that's also very important to keep your body um, always, uh, you know, uh, fresh and uh, healthy and ready to take more and more challenges because chest tournaments are really, really tough. Nine days, five hours, that's a lot. Yeah, it's true. And uh, chess players are asking questions uh, from you. They want to know uh, how to improve their openings. Any tips? Uh, how should they, uh, like, say, uh, Kings Indian defense? Mm-hmm. What should they do? How to prepare? How many games they should play before they play in a tournament? What sort of uh, thought do you have about this? Yeah, I'm going to teach you guys one hack that I use it. <laughs> uh, my coach told me, I'm, I'm still working with my coach time to time. And he told me, when you want to prepare a new opening, we're working together new opening. He tells me the ideas and then I'm playing online. That's not blitz. I'm playing like 15 minutes, 10 minutes games. Uh, but of course, I'm not playing it on my account because then my opponents can these days find out. So I have my secret account that no one knows. And even I don't know because I really forgot got it was a really long time ago so you can create this account when you're gonna practice before you go and please make sure that when you play a game you analyze it don't go next and next that's what happens to me to everyone that you play online game you win or you lose and you want to play next game and then next and next and it it it, it continues two hours three hours That's not a point. You need to understand what was the uh, problem, right? You have to stop and tell yourself, this was your problem. You have to play here 
like that, not like this. So the training you can do before the game, um, but most of the train you're getting when you play actual game against the opponent who is sitting on the on the same chessboard. That's when you are getting that uh, experience. Uh, and about the opening, the the most important it is uh, for everyone. Like we all have the problem of memor uh, mem memorizing the lines. That's very tough. I have been through, you have been through, everybody here have been through to memorize the lines. Uh, and that's very hard, of course, but um, there is a technique when like starting from the first move, you need to know why you played D4 or why you played E4. So uh, then your next moves coming forward right away because you know why you played those moves. So I'll give you one example. For instance, you play D4 and I know that I play D4 because I want to control the center, those four squares, right? And my next move is a C4 or E4 if my opponent allows because that also controls the center. So all these kind of ideas when you know, then somehow you're memorizing the uh, the moves and you're memorizing the lines and there's nothing wrong to make mistakes when you are uh, learning something new you might you know just uh, switch the order of the moves uh, some of them might be mistakes some of them might just um, turn out to be fine it's nothing wrong with it it's a process of learning but uh, the most important it is to know what is your pawn structure in every every opening, and uh, from this pawn structure you need to know where your pieces are going, and what's what's your what's your plan. Those are the three things you need to know, and for sure you need to know what is your plan. In case of King's Indian, you ask the plan there should be to attack the king side, so they, your moves should be very easy to find. You have to play this f5 f4 g5 and so on so that's that's your plan so you need to know all these like three main components the pawn structure uh pieces where the pieces should go and also the plan what's your plan thank you this is very good so they should know the pawn structure the pawn chain you get in the king's indian and mm -hmm. all the ideas where the pieces should be placed mm -hmm. and Especially, I like the point you mentioned that after every game, pause, analyze. This, yeah. uh, even I don't do. I, I also get addicted. I play one game and then again, I go to the next game because if I win, I want to win. If I lose, I want to win and then pause. So I'm also going to take note and do this as well. Thank you. And so in middle game and end game also, uh, we work on like we check strategies about uh, positional ideas, how to take advantage of a simple positional ideas. How do you think we should solve problems or we should uh, analyze full, full game or we should have a balance? Mm -hmm. uh, when it's your own game, you have to analyze it fully, of course. But if you're analyzing someone's game uh, from the book, uh, the book probably has its own uh, title. So some of the books are about the choosing the plan, or having a strategy issue, so you already know where to focus. About the middle game, it's the very tricky part um, because um, uh, middle games are basically to find a plan, right? How to plan, continue, how to learn to continue, um, play, how to win actually better positions and so on and so on. And um, for that, you just need to analyze the games. Uh, you have to learn what other people played in that kind of pawn structure and get the ideas. You need to get ideas and some of the ideas are super creative and that's the point where all the sacrifices are happening and these crazy ideas are happening. So um, that's when you're learning uh, some things based from the games. Um, there are like tons of uh, good, good games and um, uh, good books to work on that like some strategic books and about the end games end games is very tough to to work and like no one likes end games to work on um to be honest but here's the thing that a person who knows end games well wins the games most of the times because um it, we might have been like in a situation when you played the opening, you don't remember the opening, how to play, it was something new, but you got over it and you survived the opening. And then in the middle game, you you had worse position, but you are like one pawn down and you got yourself into the rook end game, a pawn down. 
that's another life. It's a second life for every chess player because rook end game when one pawn down or two pawns down, you can still hold it. And that's another chance. And that's the moment when we are having it after like 40 moves, we have another increment on the clock and like it's a totally different story. Uh, and if you are even losing whole game starting from the opening and the middle uh, middle game, when you reach to the end game, if you know that this end game might be somewhere safe for you and might might have somewhere like some ideas to hold, you can actually save your point there. And this is so important. Like the people who are very good in end game, I think Magnus Carlsen is the best in end games. Uh, it is impossible to survive that guy <laughs> in the end game because <laughs> he's super strong in that. Yes. I remember uh, there was a same three pawn, three pawn, same side, the uh, Rukian game where Carlson won. Uh, so he is yeah. the master of end games. So yeah. uh, with all opening, end game, middle game, all this, so it is chess all together, right? So what is your perspective about game of chess to you? What is chess for you? Oh, uh, well, the chess is my, my lifestyle. I'm doing chess all the time. Uh, and I'm playing chess more than 20 years. And it has been um, just a lifestyle for me. I don't know. I, I can't imagine my life without chess uh, and the chess uh, community. Um, and even there was a period when I was really far from the chess world, when I started to study at the university, I decided to be very focused on that and then started to work. Still, people were happy to see a chess player in their, at their work, at the university. And I was getting so much benefits out of that to be a chess player. So f for, for me, it is, uh, yeah, it is, I think the lifestyle that's uh, the time I'm having. And it also created so much opportunities that uh, um, I can't imagine that uh, other things could could create it. Uh, uh, for instance, started very, very, very basic thing is that uh, uh, I have been in many countries, traveled, I think too many countries have never actually counted uh, how many uh, places I have been tra traveled. And I have uh, a lot of friends from around the world which uh, like you are so rich to have so many uh, friends from around the world and you know their culture and you know so much about them uh, that you are just getting rich and rich uh, and you're you're just thinking in a different way like for instance uh, I, when I visited you in, in Sri Lanka like how would I have this experience if I, if not a chess world and if we never met at the chess tournament and become friends and then in Sri Lanka I experienced so many cultural things that I could never experience in my own country and my my brain was like whoa this is this is something that chess gave me um and uh, another thing which I will point it out um is very important that when you're a chess player you are the uh citizen of the world you are traveling so much right and as I'm, I was born in Georgia, I've been lived and traveled so many countries. And even now I'm not living in my own country, but I don't feel like I'm not living in on my own country because uh, we're still ch chess society and there's a chess tournament always that I'm attending. Um, and that's a normal thing. So you always have a work to do. You can always play tournaments. You can always coach uh, students and, uh, yeah, basically, you just need to speak one language or two languages. And that's also quite practical in that sense. Yes, definitely. And sometimes even if you don't speak the same language, chess connects, you can just talk in chess language and discuss the game. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's so true. chess that's... is your lifestyle, noted. And finally, I would like to um, ask you, as Sri Lankan chess community, we are also looking for our first women grandmaster. You're hoping to have a grandmaster in men and women both. So how to set goals for chess players? Because mainly we have players around 1,000 to 1,700, 1,800 in women. Uh, we, we had players uh, up to 2,000, but we never uh, passed. But in men, we have 2,500, 2,400, 2,300. We have players uh, who are improving really well. Uh, but young uh, small, like young, young, talented kids are there. Where they win gold medal in Asian youth, 
and so many medals they bring for the country. Rating wise, uh, we are a little behind, but uh, we all got to know about these international tournaments and related tournaments when uh, our Chess Federation president, Mr. Lakshman Ujjaya he started the international tournaments in Sri Lanka, in, uh, if I'm not wrong, in 2007. Then only I also uh, got the chance to play international tournaments in Sri Lanka. And uh, I'm saying local international rated tournaments where foreigners also can come. So we have many tournaments like that in Sri Lanka. So what do you think? Should all players play all these tournaments and get experience because they are rated tournaments? And um, how to uh, set goals? And should they play outside as well? What are the tournaments they should play? Do you have a mm-hmm. suggestion for them? Yeah, uh, actually, when um, uh, so the average rating uh, of the country is not high, as I understand, right? Uh, and uh, for instance, there are some countries where where the average rating is really high. Uh, the tournaments are average rating. So when you are playing uh, in a tournament where there is like nine hundred uh, or seven hundred average rating, to, you cannot win a lot from that. You can't gain the rating. Right, you need higher rated player to gain the rating. So when you are 2000 player and uh, you play against 1700, of course you are not getting anything. You need to play against 2200, 2400, which at this point uh, Sri Lanka doesn't have, right? So there are two ways. Either the first way is to travel abroad, and that's quite a common practice, for instance, um, among the Indian chess players. A lot of, and uh, I have met a lot of friends during these travels, a lot of them, like maybe 10, 15, 20 people, delegation are traveling to some of the tournaments in Europe. Uh, I met them in Spain and in Spain there are uh, eight or 12 tournaments in a row that's called Catalan Circle and you can travel from one city to another city and to play the tournament. The average rating on those tournaments are like 23, 2400. So basically when you win a game, you win a lot. So that's one thing, but it's quite expensive, right? To travel so far uh to play the tournaments uh and also the key for the kids they need to, uh, they need parents to accompany they can travel alone they need coaches as well to work so that's quite expensive but it's like possible for those kids who are like very talented and who who are getting the medals i think that's a very nice prize to give them this opportunity to travel and gain some rating uh and another thing is just to invite uh, f- like foreigner players title players to play in, in the tournament there myself i have been played a lot of tournaments for instance in turkey we were playing the close tournaments where like we were five foreign players five turkish players and we were playing a lot of games together like two rounds so it's a good practice it's a good chance to get the norm it's a good chance to uh get the rating so as i understood there is a wish to increase the rating and to have the players but there are not enough players to get the rating or the uh, or the um norm so i think those are the two two main ways to to get first to travel yourself to the other country and to play there and second to bring the other people to your country and to have some uh big uh, big tournaments, one or two tournaments where like, for instance, a player from, I don't know, somewhere from Europe travels to Sri Lanka and stays there for two international tournaments that will be like such a big help for the local players to have a chance to play and get some rating. And I can say that the Sri Lanka is quite tempting location for many Europeans to to discover, to 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 travel, uh, um, because the country is such a beautiful. And some of the players are actually looking for these kind of conditions to like to discover some new countries. Yeah, actually, we have so many tournaments in Sri Lanka, international rated tournaments mm-hmm. happening in Sri Lanka. Uh, like every month, sort of, we have tournaments in wow. calendar. Uh, yeah, so many uh, tournaments and uh, we have uh, opportunities for players in Sri Lanka to play in Sri Lanka. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the uh, the problem here is some players are not consistent. Like they win one tournament, the next tournament, they are not, they are losing rating. They will increase. Mm-hmm. So this has become a huge issue, how to be consistent about the play. So yeah. 
and I see I follow a lot of uh, strong players, but they don't lose much rating. Maybe minus four, minus three. But here sometimes you will increase sixty and then minus sixty uh, yeah. again. So consistency yeah. is not there. How to give the consistency of play? Well, the first thing is that to choose what you want to play and what you don't want to play. So play the strong tournaments which you think gonna win, and then don't play to the tournaments that where the opponents have lower rating because you're gonna lose a lot of rating there. Uh, that's the first thing, right? You have to choose the ones that is good for you. Um, the the other thing is like as I mentioned there uh, earlier that you need to train and then you have to play one tournament in the second tournament right away. You can't have like four month uh break or one month break you need a little rest and then you have to continue so for instance when you take your first norm woman grandmaster norm you have to play next you should not take break because you are in a good form you have to continue because you have worked this is your best period you're gonna get more uh title more norms if you continue to play so this is this is one thing and uh another uh, the, the thing like maybe what you're saying maybe those are for mainly for the junior players who are under 18 and they have this k40 factor which means that you can win a lot and you can also lose a lot so that's gonna be fixed by the time um uh, and you can help with that actually it's so uh, it's 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 good and it's also bad at some point but i think it will be stabilized at some point yeah and uh, we should not worry about rating much and we should improve the game and uh, improve yeah. chess and play right yeah to yeah become because a better it, player yeah and the, the rating of course everybody wants to have high rating and to be the first rated player and so and so or like why not uh, but if you if you take your paper and you write down a rating, you'll just be so focused on on the rating that your quality of chess will not go well. So, uh, if if you feel that you are so strong and you are so good, then your rating will increase right away. So, um, that's for sure. I think that it comes with a practice. Because I have um, seen some children, uh, they they think before a game. We usually think uh, check the opponent's name and prepare. They think if I win, I'm increasing 11. If I lose, I'm decreasing yeah. this much if I draw. So this has been uh, sort of uh, uh, in a thinking way. They also, because I think it makes the yeah. player stressful as well. I got a question like this also. How to get out of stress uh, from rating? How to not think about rating and play chess? So this was yeah, one question is. from the chat. Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. And sometimes, like, I think all of us have been in a situation when uh, you're playing against higher, way higher rated player. You have been in position, but your opponent offers a draw. That's a big dilemma. You're like, oh, yeah. God, I have a draw. That's such a nice. I can get the rating. I can I can be proud that I drew. But you can also win. But he's so strong. And so on. You, you are thinking about this. But if you just look at the board and you see the board, you have better position. Can you win? If you can win, just continue. If you cannot win, if you think that's getting worse and you are not in the mood to play, then take a draw. So um, uh, I, who was, I think it was Kasper who, who said that I'm playing against the chess pieces, not against my opponent. So like um, we need to, it's so tough, it's very difficult. Um, but if we think that this is our, this is the board and we're playing on the board, uh, not against our opponent. So that's going to help us very, very big time. And oh, there's nothing wrong to play higher rated. It's, it's good. Actually, it's very good. I can tell you guys that when you're a higher rated player, uh, and you play against lower rated player, the higher rated player feels so bad, uh, is so stressed and so nervous. Of course, not showing that at all because has so much experience of of poker face and everything. But by losing uh, against lower rated player, you're losing a lot of ratings. So they are worried, worrying about these rating things. And yeah, just chess pieces. That's all. And if you play well, you win. If you don't, you lose and you play the next time better. Definitely. And uh, finally, uh... Do you have any uh, thing to tell all our participants today? What are the, if you can name three things to take away from this uh, seminar, uh, talk show, uh, what do you think? Uh, what advices can you give them? Yeah, the first advice would be 
uh, just think what you want, not what your parents want or what your coach or what, what you want. Do you want to become a grandmaster? Do you want to become a world champion? Or maybe you want to be a coach. That's also very nice. Like, what do you want? That's the first question you want to ask to yourself. Uh, and then when you know the answer, or some, some people nowadays, they want to be a chess streamers. And it's also another thing or uh, content creators. That's also quite nice thing. So ask yourself, what do you want? And after knowing the answer, then you need to have a plan. Like you need to have a regime. You need to be um, uh, very precise with your uh, daily routine. Uh, and just one thing that my coach told me and i i actually have it still on the board on the wall he told me uh take a paper write down what's your goal and i put down international master <laughs> and put on the wall every time you're uh, struggling look at the wall you will see that's your goal so um that actually works very well and on my wall i have a lot of papers where it's like small papers and i have goals on that like just one word or like one sentence that you feel a little bit tired you feel a little bit la lazy who does not feel we all feel that way you see that you remember you have something to achieve so that's my second thing that's to be very precise with your goal and to have routine for that uh and uh, the the third thing uh, i think uh, you can like all of us can achieve anything we want these goals you just you just need to put yourself together and just like, you know, kick it, you have to start to do it. Uh, and like very often we're saying like, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 this from tomorrow. I'm gonna learn, I don't know, Spanish. I'm gonna learn King's Indian. I will do it tomorrow. Like all these kind of things when you came up with this idea, start right away. And uh, just uh, just start just start to work on that. Don't. Uh, plan it for the future because then will be a lot of things coming alongside uh, and yeah I just need to um, to have a wish and then you have to start the work and the rest of the things are so easy these days there are so many courses uh, online that you can uh, subscribe and watch there are so many books you can buy there's like coaches who can teach you so we have all these possibilities all you guys need is to have this huge wish and the will to achieve what you want. So I think those three things are the key points for, for me. Okay. And uh, one more question. They're asking what software as you recommend to play uh, chess games online uh, and practice any specific software or any specific website so or software oh well we do have uh, the, the the main uh, uh, main platform i think is eachess.com and leeches whatever makes you comfortable you have to you have to play myself i i choose uh, chess.com because uh, i have cooperation with them and it's quite a nice platform for me and uh, uh, they are offering a lot of things. They are also offering to analyze your game. So basically, you don't necessarily need the coach to tell you some like every little details, uh, but you can also analyze there. And there are also a lot of uh, platforms like starting from YouTube where everything is for free. You can watch those videos, analysis of the games. And also we have a lot of courses, chess courses that you can buy for one time and you can always have it for years and years and watch anytime you want to do so today we have plenty of these uh, possibilities in in the internet yes okay and we have our uh, chess federation president uh, mr Rashman vijay surya with us in the zoom uh, sir uh, good evening all of you I hope you hear me. Uh, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Grandmaster Kitty. So it was a nice hearing. You know, you have uh, given a great, uh, you know, things, great ideas for our kids to learn. So, I mean, this is what we lack and we thank uh, Pramodya and Sachini for taking this initiative. So actually, Georgia is uh, one of our 
good friends, even your presidents, Akaki and uh, the former one, both are friends of us. Mm -hmm. We actually, uh, you know, witnessed a great Olympiad in Botomi in 2018. So some of them were there. So right. you have added some other value, some value for that friendship as well. So I think uh, our players got a lot of things from y'all. Uh, you know, the most unfortunate thing is the, the closest country for us is India. So it's uh, very stronger. And, you know, when we are comparing to our ratings, I mean, mm -hmm. we can't match them. So mm -hmm. traveling to Europe is not that easy at this time. Yeah. So this is the problem. But, you know, we were going, uh, you know, small by small. You know, when Sachin is time, if we had these resources, he might have been a bandmaster. Yeah, at that time, Federation was not uh, stronger as now. At that time, we just started and she showed her uh, strength and she became our first women international master. So then she played in the World Cup first time. So, but all that time, we were not that strong as Federation. But, you know, with their performance only that we could come up. So day by day, we got to strong level and we could make uh, some 2,400 plus players. So we have three young people, but now it is better to think on uh, women as well, because we have a under 10 world champion. So if she can do it, no, why the other can't? So, I mean, we, we need uh, young people to follow these people. So this time also, uh, our national champion played in the World Cup. So now, these days, uh, one of our players playing in Abu Dhabi Open and playing very well. Till yesterday, he met a uh, couple of grandmasters and all others, IMs, who are more than 200-300, he didn't lose any game. I still didn't know what happened today. But, you know, so we have taken them to that level. So we want the ladies, girls also to come there. So your talk here might have encouraged them a lot. Uh, you you showed them the path. So we are ready to support them in all the ways. I mean, like having uh, close events. We started some internal grand free events. So, but it is not enough. So we'll, we'll give you some more events like that where you can increase rating. But still, I have to advise our players, you know, until... As women players, you, you pass 1,800 or reach uh, 2,000. Don't think about rating. Play your chess. You, you, at that, till that level, you have to be consistent. As uh, Sachin said, the problem with top players is they are not that consistent. They win mm -hmm. some tournaments in top level and they lose uh, the next tournament in a very bad way. So, But as you said, with the end games, they can do a lot. So they can finish their games. I have seen a lot of players saying, you know, Sir, you know, I had a very good game. I was winning, but I couldn't make it. So that happens, especially with the end games. So you advise them in a, all the way. So thank you very much. So it was a great meeting and I was very happy to hear what you said. And I take the, this opportunity to thank, uh, you know, that's why I got uh, promoted as chairman of Women's Commission, She's, she was a national champion. Uh, she's very enthusiastic working. So thank you, Pramodya. And Sachini always is there as a player, coach, uh, 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 in all presentations. Right. So everywhere she's supporting the Chess Federation. Thank you, Sachini, for everything. Still, you have time because last year you are the national champion. So try your best to become our first grandmaster, but there'll be a great fight with this young people like Koshini, who is coming from in uh, under 12 age. So we are ready to give you all, all the support. Actually, I feel that with Komarov, we could change a lot. But for the time being, with uh, Sri Lankan rupee going very less, it's very hard to get a total grandmaster here. But we are planning some grandmasters to take like uh, what uh, she said to certain 
coaching camps so those will support you all anyway finally thank you jim kitty thank you all the members of the women's commission and thank you for the participants so seeing all of your enthusiasm we get courage and we have hopes you are the hopes of the chess federation so work well so we are there to support you all thank you very much thank you very much sir for everything you are doing for us for our chess uh, i i got my women's international master title because we had asian zonal uh, because of uh, sir we had the zonal in sri lanka 3.2 so from there i got my title uh, so as i mentioned all the rated tournaments everything is happening because so you so has taken uh, asian new tournaments and everything he is organizing for sri lanka if we didn't have those tournaments we wouldn't get opportunity to uh, many won't get opportunity to go and uh, play outside so so you are doing a great job and thank you very much for everything and uh, everyone all the participants for taking part and i hope all of you will take notes of uh, whatever grandmaster kt mentioned and start working harder and harder and be the future of sri lanka chess and achieve every goal you want to achieve and love yeah. the game and enjoy chess kt thank you sachin is so 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 much uh, i also wish the best for everyone who was listening and i hope you guys then your story will be uh, the, uh, the the story that the other young players would like to hear so uh, i wish all the best and uh, uh, it's it's possible for everyone to achieve so much and to have uh, a really nice uh, a nice career in chess so thank you sachini so 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 much i couldn't resist to say no wherever you invite me because uh, you're my very very dear friend and um, I like I like everything you are doing for uh, improving chess in Sri Lanka and just also worldwide. And also big thanks to the Women's Commission to be so active. We we really need more and more women to be active to be a role model for for the young girls because uh, um, this can be such a nice opportunity for for young girls to to create their own career um, in the chess world and not only only chess and also uh, big thanks to all the all the activities and uh, nice words to uh, uh, Lakshman for all the work you're doing for the for the Federation and um, yeah I think from now you guys started such a nice work and it's just uh, it's just a matter of the time by the time a lot of achieve uh, and successes will come. Okay. And we will uh, finish our first series uh, just with one thought. Good luck for all the players and let's rise all together, kings and queens, and let's build our future together and work hard and we can achieve it. So go for it. All the best and good night for today. Good night. Bye.